Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hi, Yolanda. How you doing there? Uh, uh, it's it's good. Uh, I am fine. Uh, the day was very good. <laughs> oh yeah. How was your day? How was it? Um, mm, well, uh, I finished uh, a job that uh, assignment assigned assigned an, ass I, an assignment a few, an assignment a few weeks ago and then we can send a uh, an agreement to the government and now we are uh, waiting uh, for the document signed by the government mm -hmm. okay, okay so you're waiting for the documents now sign, right? With with the deal settled. Yes. Uh, yes, it's an agreement and this document uh, must be signed. Uh, uh, I don't know for, for oh, by the government. It's it it's mm -hmm. only signed or is it I think it's necessary to be signed and sealed. Uh well, yes, yes, like uh, the document needs uh, a seal. Right? Seal, say you. Yes. How do you write seal? Let Could you spell? Yeah. Oh. Seal. And we can say also stamp, right? We can say stamp. signature. Yes, right? yes, yes. Stamp. Which is easier, but but seal is S E A L. Hey okay, Fernando, how you doing there? We got company, Yolanda. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Welcome, sir. How's it going? Thank you. <laughs> what's going on there, Mr. Fernando? What's new? Tell us. <laughs> Everything is going good. You weren't you weren't in class yesterday, right? I, I think that I, I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I am up from the university that I have so a lot of homeworks. I totally understand. And there are many things we have to do, right? Sometimes. Yeah. Actually, yesterday I had two meetings at night. That's why I can't stay with uh, the class, the English class. So that's why you couldn't be in class, right? Yeah. So what's your name? Sorry, if you English corporative. <laughs> My name is Kalev. Caleb, okay, Caleb. Yes. Nice. I have a curious curiosity. Yes. What is your What is your last name? <laughs> Whose last Caleb. name? Me, my, mine or Fernando's? Yeah, no, your oh. teacher, yours. Oh. Caleb. Yes. <laughs> Caleb what Navarro. Your, what, what is your Ah Navarro? Okay. No. <laughs> I'm no, this is a, a a parliament. <laughs> 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 you guys make it so good. Hello, Sofia Calderon. How are you doing? <laughs> These guys. <laughs> How's it going, Miss Calderon? What's new? Uh, I do homework. <laughs> you, you're doing homework right now? You're Home working homework from Mr. Uh, Navarro, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okie doke. <laughs> Everything okay, Sophia? Are you ready for the class? I guess I'm ready, teacher. You guess you're ready? Okay. You don't sound so sure. You sound unsure. But but you're here, logged in. You're here connected. So that's great. <laughs> Teacher. All right. No. Let's yes, see. I'm yes. Tired, but I'm I'm good. You yes, were tired. But yes. And, and today, but how do you feel today? I feel good. You feel better than yesterday, huh? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I see. I understand you. I understand you. I follow you. I follow you. Hello, Carlos Dominguez. How's it going? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Welcome, Good evening, sir. teacher. Thank you, teacher. 
How's it going? Uh, good. So far, so good? Yes. Okay, okay. I'm happy to hear that. I hope everything is going well for you. And um, let me hear something about Mr. Rafael. How's it going? Hello, good evening. Fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing well. I'm doing happy now. Everybody's coming in. So we're going to have a talk. We're going to enjoy a little bit <laughs> and practice our English with good company, with the best company here, huh? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dagoberto, how's it going? Good evening, Mr. Navarro. Hello. Uh, hi. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What happened with everyone? I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> That's Mr. Navarro, sorry. Huh? You put Fer me on the spot Fer already, Fernando, Fernando said it. <laughs> Fernando said it. I don't Fernando know. Was kidding, right? You know, Fernando is a joker, right? You know Fernando, right? You know Fernando better than me, I guess. <laughs> I see it now, Fernando. I see how it is now, Fernando. <laughs> I'm sorry. I only was joking. No. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to hear you. Let me say welcome to Mauricio Morales. Hello, sir. Can Hello. I say? How are you? <clears throat> Somebody has a question? Uh, can I say the the did it did it is? Can I say to see? Ah, sí. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? that uh, lo hecho, hecho está. Okay. What is done is done. Oh, okay. What is done is done. Yes. What is done is done. <laughs> what is done is done. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I guess we're ready for the class. Uh, let's get started. Uh, today we're going to have a talk about about gerunds. I guess you guys are very familiarized with the gerund, but um, we still need to clarify what that is. Let's just start with who? Any volunteer who can explain what a gerund is? Gerund. Do you recognize that word? Yes? Can you explain what it is? No? It's a progressive tense of the verb. Yes, it's it's the it's, uh, it's an action. No, it's is an uh, is is a continuous action. Okay, uh, is the kind of verbs that have ing at the end, right? Those are gerunds. Okay, so I just I just sent you um, a picture, right, to the WhatsApp chat. So you can check, that is something we're going to be working on. But in the meantime, let me share my screen. Give me one second here. This is a little slow. All right. Can you visualize my screen now? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, teacher. Great. Awesome. Do it. So that's our objective today. We're going to learn how to use germ phrases as subjects and objects. Okay. So let's just start watching this video. Longer a verb. Is we want to practice germ phrases, as so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So, for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going to details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common 
things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. Well, and the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to. All right, and then and of course there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence. So it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, paying is not the verb. It's, it's, it's the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example, and if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb pay, I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing, and then we have paying, improve, and of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that E, for example, and then we add ING, and so we have improving. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds, and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence, and a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be, but the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence, and so becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add s to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today, right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb. And the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense, they should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and 
Tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what isn't polite, what is popular in your country, what destroys the environment, and what uh, can be dangerous. Alright teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me, learning math gives me a headache. Using yourself on in class isn't polite. Playing basketball is popular in my country. Burning fossil fuels destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Now let me talk about the last part of our class and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so let me give you a few examples about that. So we heard politicians say, I suggest improving our schools. So as you can see, the suggest is our verb and improvement becomes the object of our sense. So it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people. This is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use gerunds as objects. So they both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then they, I mean, you could you could have said uh, different things. And so what I would also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. All right. Why don't we try to give your own examples here, right? As you may see, as you may have seen, um, we can use the gerund as subject, right? When it goes right in the first position, or it can be also used as object, right? Or direct object. This can be a little tricky, but as long as you know the rules, so you will be fine, all right? So can you help? Can you help me out giving some examples? Let's see here. Who can um, help me with first example? It says, I need a ride to the airport. What can you say? I don't mind riding to the airport. OK, I don't mind um, riding, OK. Or, or giving you giving you a ride that could be a good one all right mm -hmm. i don't mind giving you a ride yes monica go ahead hi teacher i've been having problems uh, connected with the platform because i have problem with my internet mm -hmm. actually i don't understand because i don't see the full video Mm -hmm. So I, I don't understand what in the part of the video say, don't confuse the, I don't know, it was Gerundios or subject with the present, I don't know what. That's a, so, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, because we're talking about gerunds and it can be confused because we know gerunds from present continuous, right? You have seen present continuous and past continuous. Yes, yes actions that are happening in the moment yeah so these are um it's similar but but it's not actions that are happening in the moment it's actually actions themselves it's actions in general right so for example the action uh, in case, i'm sorry yeah the example yeah for example let's see can we analyze number two it says, Dad, can I go outside and play? And what does his dad say? Have you finished? The homework. The homework. I'm sorry, have you finished? Finished that homework? But you need a gerund, remember? You need a verb with the ing right there. Have you finished? Um, <laughs> What is the action with homework, guys? What is the action with homework? Working. Um, doing. 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 Wait, I, I, wait, I heard like five verbs right there. There's only one. 
Playing. Playing. No. Playing the homework? No, I don't think. No, 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 no. Doing no, no. the homework. Doing, correct. Doing the homework. Have you finished doing your homework? Okay, so that's the gerund right there. Okay, that's the, what. The gerund is doing. The gerund mm. is doing because doing is the action. The action itself, not the action happening, but the action itself, the action of completing the homework. Right? Making? Can making? Be? No, making is not possible, honey, because making, you use making with manual things. Some things that you do manually, like handicraft. Okay. Yes. Like, like uh, baking a cake, you use your hands, like making uh, breakfast because you're using your hands. So that's different. Okay. Help me analyzing okay. number three. It says, why why did Javier look so sad today? He really misses loving. <laughs> loving? What do you mean loving? <laughs> help me, help me. Come on, I guys. Think, I think he really misses a, a going to the park in the Excellent. afternoon. Excellent. Excellent. That matches very well. Okay. Remember, you can use any kind of connection as long as it's the gerund. And right there is the object, right? Because the principal verb is misses. So I think he really misses going to the park in the afternoon. Okay. What other option could have been there? I could have said, um, I think he really misses spending time with her, with his friends, let's say. Playing soccer? Yeah, playing soccer like when he was younger. Traveling to France? <laughs> traveling with friends, traveling the world, right? Awesome. Okay. So as long as you don't get confused with present continuous. I'm acting as a verb, it's acting to include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? Give me one second. Do you have any questions so far, folks? No questions? Sure? No. <clears throat> no question, teacher. I have a question, but I think that I need to see the video because I can see the whole video i i only see one minute I part think. of it yeah minutes, part of it video, but remember so. isn't is, isn't the platform i cannot play it again yeah. because of the time because i, I need to practice yeah, with I, you. I, uh, don't worry i i understand i when i see my example even in youtube so i, I appreciate your understanding I highly understand your understanding <laughs> okay why don't we go over these examples now huh um, for example, example says when surfing is very exciting. So exciting, as you know, it's actually an adjective, right? So the subject here is acting as when surfing. Can you help me with number one? Do we have any volunteer? What makes you laugh? Me. Go ahead. Joking makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Joking is the is the subject in that sentence. Is the principal actor. Somebody else has an idea for that one? For example, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. Do you have any other example for that one? Dancing make me laugh. Okay, don't forget, don't forget that dancing, windsurfing, going, if it if it's acting as the subject, then that's it's, it's considered as singular. Okay, so you need to treat it as third person. So you need to pronounce that S for makes. Makes makes me laugh 
Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep. Number two. Number two. Any volunteer for number two? Go ahead. Yes, me. Driving on traffic gives me a headache. Say, say headache. Headache. Excellent. Yeah, totally real. That is a real, that's a true example. <laughs> Excellent. Reading, reading a book gives me a headache. Could you repeat that, please? Reading a book give me headache no it's correct it's correct but don't forget don't forget again it's third person it's considered as third person so we need to comply with the with the rule of the third person where you add the letter s at the, to the verb you need to you need to write it and you need to say it you need to pronounce it right so you need to say gives gives me makes me uh-huh gives me uh-huh Gets me headed. So uh, reading the book gets me headed. Ah, a headache. A headache. Repeat, a guys. Headache. Head, head, head. Ache. Ache means pain, okay? Ache means pain. Headache. 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 Okay. So, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Can okay. I say, Go ahead. Can I say doing shop? Or shopping, doing shop gives me a headache. Shopping itself, right? Shopping. Ah, shopping. Okay. Okay. Shopping with your wife. <laughs> Especially, yeah. So shopping <laughs> with your wife gives you a headache. I am. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? It takes it takes long, huh? It yeah it, the. If, he has to, she has to, uh, she don't, at the first, she don't, she has a, a, a lot of choice and see the, the t-shirt or shoes and, and looking at the other and the other and the other. And so that, that's very, uh, uh, I don't know how do you say that. Tiring, I would say. Tire, yes, that's the that's the, the tiring. Tiring. Yeah. And, and at the end, she they don't take the decision quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did you say, Fernando? At the end, she said, "Ah, I don't like any and anyone." <laughs> Let's go to the next store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God! When that happens. But, but it's the same for us when we are uh, we are uh, going with our husband. Oh, with our husband uh, to the I don't know a store. Uh, when really? he, he yes, when he need needs to to what uh, to buy a uh, tools. Ah, a tool. okay. <laughs> could be her. Hey, she she has a point right there, guys. Let's admit it. <laughs> what happened, the Yolanda? Rule. It's the same what rule. Happened, Yolanda? Are you okay? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you guys no, are, we are tremendous. only watching. We are only watching and and, only, and see. No. I, I love, you was I the love first, you. Mauricio. You was the first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go over number three. Uh, this number three is going to be interesting because we're going to talk about something that isn't polite. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Yes. I I want to clear how this pronunciation of discussion y, de, y disgustar because I confuse when I I know what is the difference but I confuse it because for me it's so similar the pronunciation because I want to say I discuss disgusting disgust I does disgusting dis Dis disgusting Disgusting. Disgusting is desagradable, right? Yeah, something disgusting. Desagradable, uh -huh. Y discutir. Discuss. Discuss. Let's discuss uh -huh. something about politics. Yes. Okay. Discuss. Okay. discuss. We're ready? Yes? Yes. 
So can you help me now? Yeah, with number three, can you tell me something that isn't polite for you? Using a gerund. Um, <laughs> hmm. Aha, uh -huh, guys, give me, give me your option. Does anybody have something? I have one. Go ahead. Okay. Well, watching your phone during the meeting, it isn't, isn't polite. Yolanda, I'm going to say that, so you, you give my answer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you, you second. The same, right? The same. <laughs> the same thing, Yolanda. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That talking, is... Uh, talking, yeah? when, uh, talking when other person is, is talking <laughs> isn't polite. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Like, like interrupting, let's say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or 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 over talk, over talking, over can talking isn't polite. Yeah. Isn't polite. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Say the truth isn't polite. <laughs> Say or 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 saying. Saying. Saying the truth isn't polite. Really? Nah. We yeah. have a dilemma there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Let's go to number four. Okay. Number four is popular in my country. Let's go, guys. Participation. Active participation. Give your ideas. Give your examples. Talking Very about easy. other people Very is easy. popular in my country. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got it. <laughs> Somebody else? Next. Making pupusas is popular in my country. Say, say, say popular. Popular. Popular is popular. Really? Popular. Definitely. Definitely. In each corner, there's a pupuseria, right? <laughs> okay. Who else? Who else has one? Drinking beers is popular in my country. <laughs> nah, not really, right, guys? <laughs> no, in, in your country, in El Salvador, no. <laughs> I don't know what is your country. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's definitely true. It's definitely true. And it's correct. All right, let's go over number five. Teacher, says, and where are you from? Myself? Where, yeah, you. Where are you from? I'm from the same place where you are, El Salvador, right? <laughs> I'm Salvadoran, 100%. All right, I took the U.S. I know I from that another country. You where? You where? For example, for example, where Cameroon, something like that. <laughs> I know I, I took the U.S. from Panama. Panama. Yeah. Well, I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> yes, for sure. But no, I'm Salvadorian, a hundred percent. Never been in the states. Never ever learn what I learned here, right? Just like you, studying day by day, just like you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Destroys the environment. Number five. What do you have for me, guys? A smoking cigarette destroys the environment. Definitely agree with you. Smoking cigarettes destroys the environment. Somebody else has one? Can you repeat it, please? Can you repeat it, darling? The, uh, the previous smoke, the smoking cigarette destroys the environment. Thank you. Also, also, yeah, definitely. And um, somebody has another example for number five? Throwing some. Go ahead, go ahead. Mauricio, go ahead. Throwing the garbage, destroying the environment. Throwing the garbage, like throwing, throwing the, the garbage, garbage, like. In the streets. On the streets, yes. On the streets, yeah. Definitely, 
destroys the environment. Thank you. Continue, sir. Who was next? Me. Some spray deodorant. That's true. That's true. Although in that one, you're not using a gerund. You using no? Yes. Or what? Oh, did you I say you using? Know, using? I'm no. sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you repeat it again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Yolanda. You seen some spray deodorant. Destroys the environment. Thank you so much. Yes, I definitely Thank agree you. with you on that. Thank Go ahead. I have one. Go right. ahead, please. Participation, so, active participation. Your sponsor says. Cut the trees. Teacher, cut, cut the trees. The trees. I'm sorry, you're, you're cutting up. You're cutting up. Can you start again? Cut the trees. The arbol. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Cut, cut the trees. I don't know. Is it? Do we have, do we need a correction there, guys? A correction. <laughs> please, please. Cutting the tree, destroy cutting. the environment. Cutting. Yes, cutting. We're gonna use the gerund, okay? And um, cutting. Yes, cutting, cutting trees destroys the environment. Yes. Uh. Okay, okay. What about number six? We have something in negative on number six. We start with the word not, which is the negation word. And then you need to place a gerund to express that that can be dangerous. Does anybody have an example for that one? Not drinking coffee can be dangerous <laughs> for me. <laughs> for me, too. Okay, you got a point right there. Yes, especially starting the day, right? All right, not drinking coffee. What can happen if you don't drink coffee, huh, Fernando? I can be asleep at you, job, <laughs> my job. <laughs> you can be sleepy. You can be sleepy. Yeah, I can be sleepy. <laughs> my yeah, job. you can be like, like busy or sleepy or on a very slow mood, right? <laughs> so with your coffee you get like activated thank you so much someone else has one example for number six that was very creative fernando good job <laughs> not following chair. i'm sorry ladies first ladies first oh so yes yes not well for me it's not problem you first <laughs> oh my goodness okay okay go ahead gentlemen go ahead sir Thank you. Um, no drinking Coca-Cola be dangerous. Be dangerous can be dangerous. Yes, and and please repeat not. Not. Not drinking can be dangerous. Not drinking. You say not drinking Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can be dangerous. All right. Thank you. Okay, lady, it's your turn. You have the microphone. Okay, not following rules can be dangerous. Ooh, definitely not following rules can be totally dangerous. I definitely agree with you guys. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations, you guys definitely rock and roll. So you have any question? Can we move on? Some activities you have to do. And we can definitely get started with comparisons. This is a very interesting topic for me um, because we're expressing different kind of thoughts, comparisons, and we get to know our own opinions, right? Everyone has different opinions and we can respect them all using comparisons. Let's watch this video, please. Um, at the same time... Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to compare different jobs using Hello. adjectives and nouns. For example, let's say that you're... Cons Hello, can you can you watch the video? No? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it should. Okay, 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 okay. Considering being a fashion designer or an accountant. 
Being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Or maybe you're considering working as a doctor or a nurse. So a doctor has worse hours than a nurse. So in order to express these ideas, we need to use adjectives and nouns to make these comparisons. So let me do the following. Let me just uh, present the structure. But uh, before we do that, what I would like to do is present this um, comparison structures. Uh, let me just quickly point out that um, all the comparisons that we're going to do in this class and also the following, we're, we're just going to use these few comparisons, as you can see. We're going to use these words to make the comparisons. So as you can see, we could say more. And um, here in the middle, we will include an adjective. Uh, and um, and then we'll include then and that will make the comparison there um, on the other hand we could use less and at the same time we'll use an adjective there um, so a quick example um, being a fashion center is more interesting than being an accountant okay or being an accountant is less interesting than being a fashion designer and so on and so forth um, I guess also uh, since I pointed out a doctor a doctor has worse hours than a nurse or a nurse has better hours than a doctor uh, and then we're going to use this um, other ones here to point out that they might have similarities that they might be the same or that they might not be the same um, and so that's what we're going to be doing in uh, this class so let's try to make the comparison with, between two jobs um, what we'll do is we'll select these first two as you can see here. So we have this one looks like a lawyer and picture number two looks like a mechanic. So let's make the comparison between lawyer and a mechanic. Before we do that, we want to have some uh, work related adjectives in mind such as stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous. And of course there are many more but because of time we're not going to go through. Um, a lot of other adjectives uh, and we also want to have uh, or we want to consider work related uh, nouns so what are nouns are just people places or things right so in this case when we think about jobs we want to think about things like hours like how many hours you work education uh, how much education do you have uh, work uh, is your job does your job consist of doing a lot of work right uh, and these are the kind of things that we want to keep in mind in order for us to make uh, these comparisons. So what can we say about a lawyer versus, uh, let's say, a mechanic, right? We want to make the comparison between those two. Well, uh, we could say the following. I think we could say that working as a lawyer... Uh, is more <clears throat> stressful than working as as a mechanic. And then, so we will use an adjective in this case. I decided to use the adjective stressful, uh, and it's I think it's also important to mention that this is an an opinion, right? So my opinion could be different than yours. You could think the opposite of this. So I I wouldn't know neither one of those two because I never worked as a lawyer or as a mechanic so I wouldn't know which one is more stressful but it sounds like the lawyer is more stressful right and the way that we do it is well we notice that we're continuing using general phrases similar to uh, the previous class that we had where, where we learned how to make general phrases so working as a lawyer is more stressful than working as a mechanic um, at the same time, you could uh, you could say working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer, um, and that's in essence is basically the same sentence, right? But it's just in a different way. Working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer. There you go. Here we go. And the reason I did this is because I quickly wanted to point out that 
we can use either more um, or we could also use less. Right? So what else could we say about a lawyer and a mechanic? Is as interesting as working as a mechanic. So if I absolutely love cars, then definitely I think that working as a mechanic is very interesting. So in this case, I wanted to point this one out. Uh, because I want to express that both jobs are the same. So to me, both jobs um, have the same level, if you will, right? They are the same. One is not better than the other. Uh, and again, this is my opinion um, because I love cars and I also think that um, uh, lawyers are interesting and the work that the lawyers do is very interesting. So again, I want to point out that in this case, I'm using adjectives to make the comparisons. What I want to do next is use nouns to make the comparisons. So what kind of nouns can we think about when uh, we think about comparing these two jobs? Well, previously I mentioned that we can think of things like hours, maybe education, uh, or perhaps the type of work that people do. So, well, lawyer and mechanic, it, it usually is the case that a lawyer has more education than a mechanic, right? So uh, in this case, we can say that a lawyer has more education uh, than a mechanic. Uh, this is the noun that I am using to compare. What else can we say about the two jobs? Well, um, I could probably say that a mechanic has better hours than a lawyer. Okay, and in this case, as you can see, I used the one here in the middle better, and in the middle, I included uh, the noun to make the comparisons, right? So the noun that I'm using to compare, it's hours. At the same time, I could say a lawyer has worse hours than a mechanic, okay? Uh, and perhaps I could say that working as a mechanic isn't as much work as working as a lawyer. So what I would like for you to do now is I would like for you to look at all of these jobs. I will be publishing this this document here. Okay. Uh, so we got uh, there's a model. There's a journalist, there's a photographer, a painter, and just choose randomly two jobs that you would like to compare. Alright guys, excellent. Let me just go back here. Okay. Correct. I guess this topic is very two. extensive. Well, right, you might have a couple of questions or doubts, I guess, right? Interesting. Then we're going to be doing in. So I want to focus on this part because uh, these are all the ways for us to give comparisons. I want you to tell me if you have any difficulty with any of them or if there's any in particular that you want to practice. Hello, are you there? Are you there, folks? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, and you guys are familiarized with all of these ones? You don't have any problems? We can move on with the examples. A little, a little, okay. So, why don't we take a look at the picture then and uh, you give me examples, all right? Comparing any of these jobs. Why don't you um, start giving examples comparing two of these jobs? We see a photographer, what else? We see a pilot, yes? Choose your two favorite jobs and prepare a competitive example, comparative example. 
me just pull this up right here. Okay. What's your job, by the way? What's your job? I know we have a lot of professionals around here, right? So you can maybe compare your job, right? With something else, with a different job. Do we have any volunteer? Are you shy now, guys? Me. Go ahead. Mm. Be a hard stylist is more, no. It's less stressful than be an accountant. Okay, okay, okay. Now B, you're gonna put me the ing with B, okay? So you're gonna say bean. 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 Yes, bean with ing. Mm. Yeah. Bean a mm -hmm. hairstylist, is that what you said? Being a Be hairstylist is wait, wait, wait. You said being a hairstylist. Ah, uh, bean. Bean. No. B E I N G. Uh, because, be because you need the gerund, remember? Guys, I want you to prepare your example, uh, please. Okay. <laughs> so being a hairstylist is less stressful. Is that what you said? Yes. Then being an accountant. Ah, then being. Do you agree with that, Yolanda? This is just opinions, right? This is just about opinions. Okay, yes, I agree with her, but for me, uh, working as an accountant is less stressful, stressful than working as housewife. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. All right, you know that very well. You know that very well. Okay. Can somebody try an example? I'm looking for an example using a noun. Yeah, where you can talk about hours of work. Right. For example, a doctor's job. Yeah. Has some. Um, a doctor's job mm -hmm. uh, is more tired than a photographer. What? Is higher? What do you mean higher? Tired. T tired. Yeah. Oh, we're going to say tiring. Tiring. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Can you repeat using tiring, please, Noemi? Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna try. Yes. Um, <laughs> a doctor's job is tiring than a photograph. Photo, 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 photographer's job. job. Okay, so Naomi says a doctor's job is. Uh, more tiring okay you forgot the word more for comparative okay more tiring okay yeah okay okay somebody has an example ready for us go ahead You know, the basic ones, it's uh, when you use uh, more and when you use less, right? Those are the basic ones. 
Okay, so the challenge here is to use less than, to use better than, worse than, as adjective as, or not as adjective as. Okay, let's compare two jobs, okay? We still have five minutes. Why don't we compare two jobs? Can you tell me a job, please? Suggest a job. Police officer. Police officer, according to today's situation in our country. Okay. <laughs> Versus. Versus what? Versus which job, guys? Versus bodyguard. Bodyguard? It's it's in the same field. Can you can you suggest a, a, a different one, a different job from different field? Yes? Yes, no, maybe. Police officer and uh, um, teacher. Oh my god, yeah, totally different. Okay, so can you say can you say an example using let me see we're gonna use better or worse. It's your opinion, it doesn't matter, guys. I'm not gonna get offended. <laughs> but in this case, teacher is working us or what? Uh, yeah, you can use that. Okay. You can use that gerund or you can use a noun, remember? Okay. Let's use working, a gerund. Okay. Yeah. Working as a teacher is uh, better than working as a police officer. Correct. No, it's more important. Working as a teacher is better than working as a police officer. Okay, thank you. That's one opinion. Can somebody mm -hmm. say a different opinion about this one? Working as a teacher, for example, is, um, is more, is less stref, is stressful than working as a police officer. Definitely, definitely. It's less stressful. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Good job. Okay, can we use um can we use a noun now? You can say um a teacher's job. Can you start like that? Has. Can you help me? A teacher's job has. Accounting public. I'm sorry? A public accounting. Oh, no. versus public accounting? Do you want to yes. compare it? Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> we're running out of time. Okay, guys, but nice practice. I want to say thank you guys because you make it very interesting. Okay. Um, we're going to continue a little bit with these examples uh, tomorrow, hopefully, and, you know, moving forward with the classes. Thank you for your participation. Remember, it's active participation. You always have to participate and try to give your examples as much as you can. Good job for the ones who participate all the time. And I expect more from each of you. I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Okay, teacher. Good night. Okay, good, night. Good, night. good night. Sweet dreams. Good night. Bye-bye.